Hello and welcome to Far Beyond the World. This story, unlike the previous ones that I've done, is not by the Echo Project, it's actually by... that's not what I'm looking for... by... I think that's says Kale Tiger? And um, I've been playing it a little bit on my own while I was playing some of the other things. And I decided to add this one to what I was doing because I really like the story. And some people do compare it to Ad Astra, but I mean, I can see the comparison and where they're coming from. But honestly, I like the story enough and it does feel a little bit different. Well, actually not a little bit different. It does feel very different as you go along. And yeah, I think it deserves a little bit more praise and stuff because the creator of this um, spends a lot of time on it and they output a lot more content than they probably should for their own good. And honestly, it's, it's really worth it. So, well, let's begin. Complete nothingness. I feel as if nothing existed before this moment, no memories of anything other than this utter void. I don't know how long I've been here. Time seems to stretch into eternity. The rhythmic thumping that accompanies me starts to fade away. I somehow know it's the sound of my very own heart being silenced, as if death embraced me. Is this what death feels like? How can I be dead if I haven't even lived? I can't feel anything, summon any emotion, it's just me and this thorough nothingness. Finally, silence envelops me, but it's not death. Whatever's happening, it does not offer me release from this empty awareness. Suddenly I hear hundreds of whispers, one voice really, but boundless and out of time. It falls onto itself, forming an incoherent chatter. The language sounds so foreign, yet it speaks to my very core. Bits and pieces flood my mind like a tidal wave. Among the onslaught of chaos, I sift through these strange words, failing to find anything intangible. Excruciating pain surges through my mind like a blunt force to the head. The key. I want to scream in agony as my entire being is set aflame by these words. Then the black canvas pulls over my eyes. I can see the darkness now, cold and pitch black. Black stone. Another search fills my mind with painful awareness. I know what stones are, what earth is. This void is not native to me. I come from a world beyond this nothingness. I'm trapped here. You and I. I suffer another torment. I feel myself materialize in the abyss, my body becoming the edge of existence. I'm no longer floating in nothingness. Instead, I'm immobile, restrained and left in the dark. I must break free. This isn't right. This isn't right. Wake up. The whispers intensify as if urging me on. Am I dreaming? Is this a nightmare? Wake up. Their anger rises and the command is harder to ignore through the agony caused by each word. I want to wake up, I do. Wake up! The light rushes into my eyes as if I'm stricken by lightning. I know what lightning is. I can picture it crackles across the stormy sky. I'm sure I've seen a storm before, with flashes so bright that for a split second everything turns white. Pretty much like now. I'm forced to squint as my vision doesn't adjust. Everything is so blurring and white. I could have sworn I'm staring into the sun. Sun. I can almost recall its warmth. I'm certain I belong here, in this world. The void that held me moments ago slowly fades into my memory. It was just a dream and now I awake. I will return to my normal life, whatever it may be. Despite trying my hardest, 
I can't remember anything concrete about my past. The pain in my eyes lingers and I want to shield myself from the glare, however my body is numb. I try to raise my hand to bring it over my head but it only flops in place. My heart speeds up at a horrid realization. I can't move. I try to speak but it only comes out as a mumble as I struggle against my limp body. Am I paralyzed? My fingers twitch as I concentrate on them, tapping at the soft mattress beneath me. No. I'm just frozen. I can feel that I woke up from a long, deep sleep and my body just now starts thawing. Somehow I managed to use my lifeless hand as a pendulum to flip myself to the side. I arch my back, crawling like a snake in the bed, trying to get to the edge. Finally my eyes adjust and I can see the room. Raising my head is a challenge, but eventually I managed to have a proper look around. I can see the door in front of me. There's only one window, it has a wide cluttered ledge and lets in the light in the early afternoon. There isn't much in the way of furniture, just a wooden chest next to the door, a cupboard to the left and a large wardrobe next to the window. I can't help but notice how dirty everything is, with cobwebs in every corner and dust filling the air. Despite my memory loss, I'm sure of one thing, this isn't my room, this is not my home. Where the hell am I? I struggle a bit further, still very numb, although I can feel life returning to my limbs. I push myself over the edge, which I fast realize was a mistake as I fall hard to the wooden floor with a loud thud. I almost pass out with the force with which my head slams the boards, but the cold of the ground instantly seeps through my naked skin, bringing me back to my senses. I try to collect myself from the floor, pushing hard with both hands, but it feels as if I'm lifting a boulder. All I manage to do is sit up in a groggy fashion, noticing my naked upper body. At least my lower part is covered by what I think is a loincloth, which is strange to say the least. There's a sound of heavy footsteps approaching the adjacent room. I gaze at the door anxiously, expecting some sort of familiar face coming to my aid. Baby, I'm away with family, even though I can't remember who my family are. Everything feels so strange and out of place. The door cracks open and my wishful thinking is snuffed out by a large wolf creature entering the room. He's covered in thick black fur, standing upright on his hind legs with torso chiseled like a marble statue. For a split second, my attention drifts to a round black stone resting on his chest, filling me with an odd sense of dread. However, that's quickly replaced by a more rational fear as I shiver at the sight of the wolf's clawed paws, tensing up in anticipation. The beast snarls, gazing at me with his wide red eyes, almost as if looking right through me, and I can't help but stare right back at his massive snout filled with jagged fangs. My fucking luck! I told him not to leave me alone! I don't even register that he speaks, feeling weakness overtake me. I must be dreaming. This is a nightmare. Finally, I win the inner battle and manage to regain control of my frozen body. I throw myself up against the cupboard, climbing it like a cliff. Instinctively, I pull out a drawer, hastily rummaging through its contents to find anything I could use to defend myself. Amongst the clothes and trinkets, I grasp something with a hard handle and pull it out, holding it tight in front of me with both hands. What are you doing? The wolf regards my weapon with mild contempt. It's a wooden comb. Despite how foolish I look, I still hold it out in front of me, jabbing at the air to make the beast aware I mean business. Before I can even react, he's already on me, one paw grabbing my neck and pushing me hard against the wall. My head bounces off of it like a ball, and I nearly drop my only weapon. That's when his massive paw squeezes my left wrist, the pressure he applies to my bones taking the floor from beneath me. My legs are noodles and I simply hang from his hold. Let it go. He reiterates through his fangs, snarling straight into my face. I tear up as he squeezes harder, almost to the breaking point. Without a choice, I let the comb go and it flops to the floor. The next thing I know I'm being swung onto the bed like a ragdoll, my weight meaning nothing to this beast. I bounce off the bedding, scraping my shin bone on the wooden frame. 
The pain jolts to my head and I gasp, quickly grabbing my leg and pulling it close to myself. Fuck it hurts. It almost makes me forget about the still throbbing wrist. Now stay there if you know what's good for you. I'll be back in a moment. The wolf huffs at me in annoyance and hastily leaves the room, closing the door behind him. What the fuck is going on? Why can't I wake up? I lie there in bed, huddled in pain and crying, desperately trying to end this nightmare, but with no success. The pain lessens and my panic slowly switches me from fight to flight mode. I need to escape. I can hear the beast rummaging in the next room, clearly looking for something. I look towards the window and realize that I don't want to find out what he's looking for. His current preoccupation is my best chance to get out of here. I try to step off the bed as quietly as I can, tiptoeing. I move closer and closer towards the only route of escape. I freeze up as one of the boards creaks, almost as if on cue. My eyes trail to the door and I weigh my options. Instincts overtake me and I jolt to the ledge, immediately locating the latch, locking the window, but I cannot open it because of all the clutter. In a panic, I begin brushing everything off with complete abandon, racket echoing across the empty room. I can see the forest in front of me, freedom just within my reach. Help! Help! I yell out as I hear the beast storm in, the doors fly open with a bang. What the fuck? Somebody help me! Not even a second later, the entire world turns, as if I were on a merry-go-round. My stomach moves up to my throat and I fly across the room with the force of the spin. I gasp as my back strikes the bed again. Despite the padding, it's a very rough landing, but before I even register the world of pain my entire body is in, I see the black shadow sweep above me. The entire bed shakes as the beast lands on top of me, his powerful paws flanking me on both sides. He presses his snarling muzzle into my cheek, forcing my face to one side and pressing it deeper into the bedding. I guess we have to do this the hard way. My eyes well up as I feel him dribble onto my neck with each hot puff of air. Please, somebody! He cuts me off with his paw, pressing it hard on my mouth. I continue my muffled shouts as I cry in horror. Wake up! Why can't I wake up? Shut up, or I will rip your fucking throat out! The beast growls, grabbing my neck with his other paw, the weight of his upper body now fully pressing down on me. He's squeezing my windpipe shut, without even trying. I want to gouge out his eyes to throw him off, but I'm unable to reach his muzzle over the bulging muscles of his arms and shoulders. I clamp my eyes shut as my body begins to convulse, partly due to the hysteria, but mainly because I am desperately trying to draw air. Finally, my hands go limp, and I fall lifelessly onto the bed, ending my pathetic defense. I will die here. I don't want to die. My muffled screams begin to fade as the agonizing pain fills my empty lungs. Shut up! He pushes harder, increasing my desperate tremors. My body becomes unresponsive, and I lose any sense of self. I can hear his angered growl hush above me just as everything begins to fade. I slowly return to the darkness, again accompanied only by my beating heart. My mind stirs with a slight discomfort stretching across my entire body. My mouth is dry and there is tension in my joints. I now realize my arms are twisted behind my back, arching it upwards and in an uncomfortable way. I can feel as if something unpleasant was stuck in the back of my throat. Did I fall asleep like this? I'm not sure what happened. I think I was having a bad dream, something about a werewolf in a cabin in the woods. I seem to have a a lot of night terrors lately and I'm glad I can finally wake up. But as I open my eyes, it's clear that the nightmare isn't over yet. It's the same dingy, little room with a small window, black fur and fangs flash through my mind. Oh no. The savage attack was not a dream. I try to jump up, but my hands and ankles are tied together with a length of rope, bounding me like a parcel. I can't roll to either side without dislocating my shoulder. There is no breaking free from this. When I try to speak, I realize I'm gagged with a dirty cloth, which explains the dryness and the weird briny aftertaste. I look around the room trying to jog any memory of this place. 
Was I kidnapped? Is this some sort of messed up prank? I try to rationalize my situation. However, the more I think about it, the more cold sweats dot my body. Why can't I remember anything else than this cabin? Is anyone even looking for me? I can hear someone in the other room, heavy footsteps pacing impatiently back and forth. I gaze at the door with dread, almost certain it is the same beast that just attacked me. Then I hear someone else enter the cabin. Finally! What took you so long? The cold voice confirms my suspicions. It's that brute. I had to avoid my father all day. He only just left. The hunt should buy us some time at least until the morning. How's the human? Peachy. I frown at the comment. Peachy, indeed. What do you mean? He's awake? See for yourself. There's a rush of padding towards the door, and I panic as a massive gray wolf enters the room. He's dressed in some sort of medieval armor, a green cloak falling from his shoulders. Initially, he has an excited expression, but it immediately sours at my predicament. He throws an angry gaze towards the black male who tied me up. What the hell did you do to him? The human should have just been tied to begin with. He tried to escape. When I see the brute, I want to scream, to run away, but all I can do is wiggle and mumble. The gray wolf approaches me, looking down carefully over my body. Are those choke marks? He's all bruised. I saved our pelts, you idiot. My eyes open wide at the creatures arguing at the foot of the bed. Seeing one of those wolves was bad enough, but seeing them both sends a chill down my spine. All I can do is stare, motionless. They're both enormous, much taller than what I would consider natural, with broad shoulders making their entire posture more intimidating. And that's without accounting for all the fangs and claws. I am terrified. I avoid looking directly at them, but a shadow moves in to the corner of my eye. The gray wolf is approaching me slowly, paw extended towards my face. Help! Someone help me! I try to call out, but all I can accomplish was a muffled whine through my gag. My crushed windpipe feels as if I swallowed a stone, a painful lump stuck halfway down my throat thanks to that monster. Shh. The gray wolf tries to shush me, but I continue to yelp despite how much it hurts. Help! I want to wake up! Please, be quiet. His soft pleadings almost cause me to stop, but I can hear a deep growl behind him. Just fucking kill it before everyone hears this. And just like that, the most instinctual cry comes to me, the one I always fall upon in a seemingly unending nightmare. Mom, mommy. This is a bad dream. It has to be. Stop snarling, you're making it worse. The gray wolf snaps at his companion, and he gets onto the bed, his chest hovering right above me. Being exposed like this makes me shout even more. However, his massive paw gently presses down on my face. Although he's trying to silence me, this wolf is going about it differently than the previous one. His other paw reaches behind my head, holding me securely and gently ruffling my hair. Shh. His greenish eyes plead with mine and I find his expression and demeanor almost soothing. Please, calm down. I notice he begins to match his breathing with mine, his massive chest expanding in the same rhythm. He's guiding me down from the edge of panic, and for whatever reason I follow. All I want to do is feel safe, and somehow, he manages to make me feel just that. Slowly, I let down my fight, my muffled voice getting fainter and fainter. That's right. He encourages me. Nothing's going to happen to you. I promise. I'm going to let go. But you have to stop screaming. I look at him, wide-eyed. He speaks slowly to me, enunciating every word in odd fashion. If anyone finds out that you're here... He gestures with a clawed finger towards his neck, making an unmistakable slit mark. I guess he means I would be killed. Do you understand? I don't, but I'm in no position to inquire further, so I simply close my eyes and take a deep breath. Good. It's okay. 
His voice is oddly comforting, as if I've heard it before. Let me fix this. My mind tells me to run, however my body is powerless. I must trust him. There is no other choice. Besides, if he wanted to hurt me, he would have done so already. He removes the paw from my face, his furry fingers brushing the cloth fastened around it. I can see his claws carefully pick at the rim. I will take this off, but you have to promise me that you won't scream. My eyes tear up as I watch his massive jaw open in rhythm with his words. I think it only now sinks in that those beasts indeed talk. You can't be serious. The brute protests, looking at me with a murderous gaze, but the grey wolf ignores him. He looks expectingly at me, bringing a finger to his lips to emphasize that I need to stay quiet. Okay. I nod, closing my eyes. As I remove the cloth, pulling the bundle out of my mouth, I gasp in relief, tears flowing down my cheeks freely. When I try to catch my breath, the Grey Wolf inspects the material with which I was gagged, looking back at his companion with disgusted expression. Is this my... I had to improvise. The Black Wolf shrugs. I can't even contemplate the implications, as my mind begins to spin out of control. What the fuck is going on? I ask myself in a pitiful squeak. The Grey Wolf looks at his companion. That language, is that... Venar or Freyr? How should I know? I don't speak human. What are they talking about? I understand them perfectly. Great. How are we going to explain this to him after you brutalized the kid? I was being gentle. Explain what? I asked them without even thinking about what I'm doing. I noticed both males looking at me wide-eyed, as if they seen a ghost. For the first time, the Black Wolf shows an expression other than scorn. What's going on? The wolves briefly exchange glances, looking back at me with the same surprise in their eyes. What? It speaks. It might just be a few words. The Grey Wolf shakes his head, looking at me for confirmation. Right? I don't respond, my thoughts are spinning in complete confusion, and the Grey Wolf simply points to my legs. Let's get you untied, huh? I wouldn't do that. I ignore the brute and hastily nod to the Grey Wolf, desperately wanting to get out of this awkward position. I need him to trust us. How can we do that when he's tied up like a prisoner? He works his fingers around the knot, cursing under his breath. Fuck, did you have to make it so tight? The other wolf only shrugs. I can't see much, but I feel the stinging of brute skin as the ropes finally loosen up. There we go. My legs stretch out almost on their own accord, the tension in my knees finally letting up. I sigh in relief. I didn't think it was possible to feel so good just stretching out like this. Right. I need to turn you on your back. He circles in the air with his finger, letting me know what he intends to do. I just nod. Please, don't do anything stupid. What could I possibly do with two monsters hulking over me? I allow myself to be rolled over, and I feel as the gray wolf walks onto the bed and mounts my back. His voice is tinged with embarrassment as I grunt under his weight. Sorry, just a precaution. He squats on my butt his muscular legs to either side of my torso, squeezing slightly to hold me fast. I guess he doesn't trust me to stay still. It takes him a while to undo the knot, but when he's finally done, I feel the blood rush to my hands. I try to push myself up to force some life into my numb limbs, but I feel a giant paw pressing against my naked back with leathery pads. Don't make me regret this. He whispers the words into my ear, and his cautious tone completely throws me off. I'm not the dangerous one here. Not wanting to startle him, I stay still until he gets off of me, turning back to face them only when I feel his weight disappear. His paws slide off my back, but he keeps hovering over me, his form dwarfing mine. I'm calm enough to finally have a proper look at him. His fur is gray, but with slight brown tint to it. 
I rubbed my stinging wrists, tracing the red marks where the ropes held me. I do that more out of contemplation rather than actual pain. Everything is so confusing and absurd, yet feels so real. Uh, you okay? Am I? I adjust myself in bed, trying to rise slightly, so that the wolfman doesn't hover above me in such an awkward fashion. His eyes are kind, and show a caring person behind the mask of a wild beast, a stark contrast to his muscular and burly build. Not to mention his black companion. I am sitting in this strange room surrounded by talking wolves. If this is not a dream, then I must be insane. Seriously, you did a number on the poor kid. The gray wolf eyes my neck, causing me to immediately touch it. I wince in pain, drawing air through my teeth. My throat still hurts and it clearly doesn't want to be touched. Gaining his trust will take a fucking miracle now. He throws an angry stare to the black male, who simply raises a brow. His trust? What about us? He could be dangerous. Don't be ridiculous. He's tiny and obviously frightened. How dangerous could he possibly be? I'm not sure I'm frightened anymore. My emotions are running a riot and I have no idea what I actually feel now. I just sit there, unsure what to do. The Grey Wolf's demeanor is quite disarming. His kind eyes and soothing voice allow me to calm the torrent in my head ever so slightly. Between him and the Black Brute, he genuinely doesn't seem to wish to harm me. I resume rubbing my wrists and the Grey Wolf notices that, his big paw reaching out to them. As he's about to touch me, I clasp his paw with both hands and bringing it close to my face so that I can have a better look. It's so soft to the touch, the fur kept and having a vague scent of the forest. I turn the paw over to reveal the its underside. With six distinct leathery pads, they are dark brown and surprisingly supple, more akin to skin than what I initially thought. I trace my fingers from his paw to the dull tip of the middle claw. This is so surreal. Before I let go of his paw, I ruffle the fur around his wrist, trying to find where there might be some sort of partition in the costume. I find nothing, gazing at the muzzle of the wolf, dumbfounded. Why would I even think it's a costume? I can't help myself, but I reach out and touch his chest. Despite the fur, I can clearly see defined muscles. I carefully brush away a round necklace, its stone is white, but otherwise it looks similar to the one the black wolf wears. I sink my fingers into his fur and immediately met with contrasting sensations, the softness of the coat and the rock-hard pecks be beneath it. His chest expands heavily with each breath while I move my hand from one breast to the other, completely mesmerized. He's so warm. I can't believe my senses. This can't possibly be real. Um. He clears his throat, looking as confused as I am. My eyes and hands drift to his snout, but I stop short from touching him. He looks at me with slight surprise, as if he notices my hesitation. He pushes his muzzle into my open palm. His nose is wet and warm, like I'd expect a wolf's nose to be. What are you doing? Don't let... I want him to feel at ease. The Grey Wolf extends his paw towards his companion in a calming manner, letting him know to leave me be. I am completely lost in my own thoughts as my hand wanders the length of his muzzle all the way to his cheeks. I groom his side fur, realizing how soft and pleasant the grey fur is. As I caress his face, he rests his head in my hands, looking almost cute and innocent. I hear soft thumping of his tail against the bed. He's enjoying my attention, but I'm not really petting him. I'm simply trying to convince myself that this is not an illusion. Finally, I venture lower to his mouth fueled by this exploring frenzy. I almost touch his lips when I hear a soft growl from the black wolf. Careful now, he used to chew on his toys. I blink, pulling my hand back. What am I doing? I'm about to foolishly stick my fingers into a wolf's maw. I grimace in discomfort, but the gray wolf simply smiles at me. Any thought of harm quickly disappears from my mind, but another troubling realization takes its place. He's real. You're... a wolf? I try to keep a straight face as I say those ridiculous words. Yes, and you're a human. 
He touches my shoulders with his paw, his words still annoyingly slow and steady. I finally realize what bothers me about it. He talks to me as if I were either stupid or a child. And since I'm not a child, feeling patronized, I finally snap out of the stupor and brush his paw away. Where the hell am I? Who are you people? The two wolves exchanged confused looks, this time both their expressions turning. That's a more than just a few words. The brute is clearly upset that I can speak, and it only fuels my frustration. Can you understand us? Yes, of course I can. What is this place? This is my home. Why am I here? Did you kidnap me? W -w -w no, I found you. How did it learn our language? There's no hint of an accent. It's as if it was born and raised here. The Black Wolf's inquisition into my linguistic skills finally pisses me off. What are you talking about? I'm not speaking your language. You're speaking mine. You were raised speaking woven? Yeah, right. Someone shaved his ugliest pup and abandoned it in the woods. Speaking woven? As in what? Growling and howling? I'm so confused. I cannot hear this woven language they insist I'm using. I don't know what you two are talking about, but this is my language. Always has been. You're either a spy or a fucking lunatic. I'm neither, you dumb beast. I spit out in anger, causing the black wolf to snarl viciously, his fur bristling. I quickly regret doing that, as I can see the black monster tense up, ready to give me another thrashing. Shut up, both of you! The gray wolf looks back at me with slight annoyance. I thought you said you could understand us. So which part of being killed, if discovered, didn't you get? He gives me a stern look and I cool down a bit. Talking back to either of them is not the best idea. We need to keep quiet. Why? What's going on? You shouldn't be here. I'll explain everything, but for the time being, please trust me. It feels like a stretch, however, I don't seem to have any other options. Okay, fine. I can see through a sigh. But I don't understand anything that's going on here. How are you speaking our language? This language is what I know, what I've always known. We heard you speak something else, though. I don't know what you said, but it wasn't woven. W what? No, that's not right. I don't remember speaking or thinking of any other language. I really need you to help me out here. The Grey Wolf looks at me worried, hastily sitting down on the bed and reaching for my hand. I flinch, startled by the beast's movements and proximity, managing to retreat my hand before the paw lands on it. I cradle it near my chest, making the wolf aware that I'm not okay with him touching me. It may be a little hypocritical, considering I took full liberty in touching him, but that thought quickly disappears with another bizarre question. Do you speak Tigarian, perhaps? Tigarian? I scoff almost mocking the gray wolf. A as in tigers? You're saying that there's talking tigers out there? The wolf's eyes wander off in annoyance, as if he wants me to just make my jaded point already. What else? Elephants? Oof. I bet their language is what? Elephantine? I finally lose it and I'm unable to contain a chuckle. The human is fluent in our language and even cracks jokes. This whole mess just went from bad to worse. What are we going to do now? I don't know. My thoughts begin to wander off to the world outside of this room. Where the hell am I? That's exactly my point. You never think these things through. Your father will... He does not have to know. Have you also gone mad? Is that thing contagious? At least for now, let's keep my father out of it. I need to find a way to present this in the least controversial way. How do you want to do that? Roll a human in honey and cover him with fur? What are they talking about? Obviously not. No, that's a relief because it's not crazier than smuggling a human here in the first place. I don't know why I allowed you to rope me into this. I just look between the two wolves arguing, still none the wiser. Can somebody please explain to me what's going on? I find myself barking out in annoyance. The Grey Wolf looks at me surprised, then sighs. 
I guess this is where we introduce ourselves. He straightens up, pumping out his chest. It's clear he's trying to be presentable, as if it'll make any difference to me. Ugh, don't. My name is Rannoch. He speaks slowly, deepening his voice like some guys do when they try to impress. And this is Vulgar. He notices my reluctant gaze towards the other wolf and laughs awkwardly, the self-important image dissipating almost instantly. Don't mind him. Despite his demeanor, he's a good friend. A friend? He almost killed me. I shout out, glaring at the black male with hatred in my eyes. I can still see him hovering above me, choking me until I pass out. Ranak frantically shushes me, pushing his finger against his lip. If I wanted you dead, do you think you'd still be here bitching about it, little piggy? A soft growl follows the wolf's words, but it's cut off as Ranok gives him a stern look. What he did was a bit... harsh, but in truth, he saved your life. What are you talking about? He nearly choked the life out of me. If anyone would find out you're here, you would be killed. His voice tries to convey the gravity of the situation, but I'm at a loss. You keep saying that, but you don't explain why. We don't allow other kin in our forest. Trespassing is forbidden and punishable by death. What the hell are other kin? You for one, little piggy. It is a term for any intelligent species other than our own. You're an other kin to us, just as we are other kin to you. I shake my head slightly, trying to comprehend what he's saying. Hold on. You really mean that there are other talking beasts out there? Either it's kidding, or there's something wrong with it. You don't remember? The Grey Wolf looks at me pleadingly, as if asking to end whatever game I'm playing. I think I would remember living in a world inhabited by talking animals. Rannoch's brow narrows, showing he has taken offense at my comment. We're as much talking animals as you're a talking chimp. I'd say it looks more like a talking piece of would-be ham. Now I'm the one offended. Stop calling me it! I have a name! Well, you didn't give it to us. No, don't ask its name! Ranak huffs with a cheeky smile, allowing one fang to perk out. He's making a good point, and I decide to ignore the Black Wolf's protests. It's... Wait, what is my name? And just like that, it rolls off my tongue. Emilio. It's strange to hear it out loud, but it also feels right. Oh, for fuck's sake. Emilio. Good. We're getting somewhere. The Grey Wolf smiles, ruffling my hair. I consider swatting his paw away, but his kind expression convinces me to simply ignore his forwardness. What we're getting in is some real deep shit. I flinch, seeing the black wolf look at me with his cold eyes. We need to kill it. I freeze, seeing that the wolf is not joking. What? Ranak jumps up to his feet, shielding me with his body. His reaction pushes me further into paralysis. We need to get rid of this freak before anyone finds out. Sheltering an other kin is one thing, but having it speak our language is deadly serious. We need to kill it. We are not doing that. Rannoch raises his voice, causing me to wince. Their bodies tense up and I can see their every muscle straining. Rannoch, be reasonable. There is no way you can spin this. We can be banished. I don't care. My heart skips a beat as I hear Rannoch issue a powerful snarl. I can't see his expression, but I'm sure it mirrors that of the black male who bears his fangs in a vicious, almost feral way. Both wolves hold their paws close to their chests with fingers feathered out in anticipation. I cannot stand by while you're making the biggest mistake of your life. This is not a mistake. This is my destiny. Verissa. Without a warning, Volga rushes my defender and they clash a few steps away from the bed, heads budding and paws interlocking. Verissa huffs incense and eats hallucinogenic mushrooms. She's not speaking with the ancestors. You know that. I cannot avert my gaze from this spectacle, particularly because I'm frozen, but also because my life depends on the result. I half expect them to thrash about biting each other, 
but instead to stay locked like this. What I know is that Mother Moon guided me to this human, just like Verissa said she would. She said you would find your purpose. The ceremony is just a tradition. You were meant to reflect on life by observing falling leaves or a sunset. Not to break our sacred laws for a fucking human. I hear his string puffs as they wrestle with each other in place. Despite how vicious they sound, growling and snarling, I can see that they're not really fighting, but rather trying to overpower one another. The human spoke my name. Rannoch struggles the words through a grunt as Vulgar twists his paw back, forcing the Grey Wolf to one knee. He's losing. Has it occurred to you that since the human speaks our language, he might have simply read it? What is he even talking about? Where would I have read Rannoch's name? I've never heard it before in my life. Vol, you are my moon brother. I don't want to fight you. That is exactly why I have to fight you. You're about to fuck up our entire lives. Volger's gaze drifts towards me, his right eyes piercing right through my flesh. He knows he will soon have his way. His elaborate snarls and growls begin to send me over the edge, and I know another panic attack is fast approaching. I close my eyes, huddling myself and slowly rocking back and forth like a traumatized child. I don't think anymore. I just want this all to stop. Stop it, please! Everything goes silent as I cry out through tears. Just stop! Emilio! The mattress jumps up as the wolf's weight lands on it. I open my eyes and see the grave wolf splayed out in front of me. Volger must have used my cry as a distraction to throw Rannoch back. I glare at the brute, approaching us and without even thinking, I shield Rannoch with my own body. Please, don't fight over me. I don't understand what I've done wrong. You've done nothing wrong. I feel Rannoch embrace me as he pulls me to the side, covering me with his flank and reversing our positions. Now he's the one protecting me. Rannoch eyes the black male with a wild determination, and his muzzle twists into a warning snarl. Volger stops, folding his arms and looking down at us with mild contempt as I stay in the grave wolf's embrace, clinging to his fur. I just want to stay close to someone. Rannoch adjusts us slightly, sitting at the edge of the bed with me still pressed into his chest, my side resting on his lap. For fuck's sake! I won't let you harm the human. He hugs me tightly, issuing another protective growl. There is a moment of silence while I simply fall deeper and deeper into despair. Why is any of this happening to me? Nothing is ever easy with you, is it? Volger makes a long, drawn-out sigh as if releasing all the tension he's built up to this moment. I'm not like you. I don't solve my problems through violence and killing. Pity. You should try it sometime. Ranak allows me another moment of warmth, but then gently pushes me away from his chest. I just sit there, not really present, watching as he clumsily gets back up on his feet. The wolves are now standing side by side, almost as if nothing really happened. It's okay. We're done fighting. He's trying to get me to compose myself, but I'm already far gone. I'm sorry you had to see that. It's not exactly how I envisioned our introduction. I don't understand what's going on. Why am I here? And who are these monsters? Why can't I remember anything? This Is this really the world I was born into? If so, why does it feel so alien, as if my instincts are telling me that this is not my home? Shh, it's okay. The Grave Wolf lowers himself to get closer and I close my eyes, huddling tightly to the wall. My head throbs with a torrent of questions that slowly overwhelms me. I hug my knees, pressing them into my chest. The adrenaline rush pumped by my palpitating heart is the only reason why I don't break up in tears. Everything is just a blur, and although I can still hear them, nothing really registers. Not consciously, at least. Its heart is fluttering like a startled bird in a cage, messes with my instincts. I open my eyes, looking up at them as they stare me down intensely. It only empowers the erratic pounding in my chest. I can't breathe. Yep, there it is. Undeniable, go for the throat feel. The words stick out like a sore thumb, freezing me up in fear. Shut up! The kind wolf snorts at his friend and hunches next to me, leaning in closer. 
He's obviously trying to comfort me, but I can't help but notice his fangs poking out. Hmm. <laughs> you feel it too, don't deny it. I can see you're all tensed up. The statement makes me notice how Rannoch's fur is standing up ever so slightly, his body barely containing some subconscious exhilaration. I flinch away from his gray paw, but the wolf persists. I run out of room to recede into as he gently takes hold of my chin and guides my gaze back towards his. I meet his docile smile with caution, the world still distorted by adrenaline haze. Calm down. No one's going to hurt you. I don't feel that's entirely true, recalling what the black wolf said just a moment ago. Go for the throat. I cut off, shielding my neck with a hand. Don't listen to him. Your racing heart is just messing with our heads a little. He admits with a slight embarrassment as his paw touches my shoulder. Just an uneasy feeling. Nothing we would lose control over. I'm more worried that you're going to have a heart attack. The Grey Wolf squeezes my shoulder slightly, as if trying to pull me back from the fit of terror. He then takes a long inhale, his nose close enough to draw strands of my hair in his direction. Breathe in. He holds his breath for a moment, and without realizing, I do as he instructs. And breathe out. I chuckle as a large huff of air brushes over me. That's it. My heart regains a bit of its rhythm. I am unsure how I feel about this beast man's ability to sense my heartbeat, but for the moment, it seems to allow Rannoch to guide me back from a panic attack. His gestures and words somehow match my pulse as he squeezes me gently with every thump inside my chest, almost as if giving cues to my startled heart. Finally, I'm back to normal, or at least a semblance of it. The wolf keeps upon my shoulder for a while longer, still squeezing in rhythm. Welcome back. He smiles again, certain I have calmed down. Only now does he let me go to face his comrade. I know it's a lot to ask of you, but could you stop freaking him out? Vulgar grimaces, his arms still crossed as he drills his cold gaze into me. I can't help but flinch at the sight of him eyeing me out. To me, he's fear incarnate. I think it's too late for that. Look, I'll fix this. Rannoch draws his gaze towards him as he points to the white, rounded necklace on his chest. See this? These are our moonstones. Every wolf is given them at birth, to represent the phase of Aluna when we came to this world. Full moon? Yes. He smiles. I was born during the full moon, an auspicious sign for sure. So was he, actually, just an hour earlier, which makes us moon brothers. I look to the similar necklace on Vulgar's chest. His stone, however, is black. For some unknown reason, it keeps unsettling me ever since I first saw it. Blackstone. I say it with a worried expression, almost as if repeating someone. <laughs> he was born during an eclipse, something we call Dark Moon. These necklaces are the most valuable possession we have. What are you doing? Explaining to him the significance, so that he can understand what I'm about to ask. No. Whatever is being discussed is causing the black male a great deal of discomfort. Vol, I want you to swear. You're fucking insane. I won't do it. The black wolf snarls, causing me to shudder. Swear on your moonstone that you won't harm Emilio. You want me to do that for a human? I want you to do it for me, as your moon brother. I dart my eyes between Rannoch's pleading expression and Vulgar gritting his teeth. This request causes them a great deal of pain. I can see clearly that the wolf is not taking this lightly. Without warning, Vulgar punches the wall next to the bed, causing me to yelp. The entire house shakes as a plaster cracks, bits and pieces of it falling to the ground. Ugh, this is fucking bullshit. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that punch. The strength of this beast made perfectly clear. He wasn't bluffing when he claimed that he was being gentle with me. He could snap me like a twig. Vol, please. The black wolf's rattled breath fills the room for a few moments 
as a growl deep inside his chest begins to subside. Finally, he releases a long, drawn-out sigh and looks at Rannoch, fully composed. His right eyes drift to me, and I can see his massive paw touch the rim of his black necklace. On my moonstone, I swear I won't harm your little piglet. Thank you. The gray wolf turns to face me with a smile. See? He will never harm you again. You can be certain of that. He might be cynical and a bit rough around the edges, but he's the most honorable wolf I know. I do actually believe him. I could see that getting the promise out of the black wolf was not easy. Regardless, I still feel anxious around him, but at least I know that there's no immediate danger. Your father will not swallow this lightly. We're looking at an exile. If my father hasn't banished me so far, I doubt this will make any difference. And if it does, I had it long coming. Sounds like Ranak gets in trouble a lot. I'm not sure if his self-awareness should be commended or not, considering he keeps causing more trouble. Then again in this instance, I'm glad, as so far it seems, he saved my life. Somehow. Are you really willing to risk everything over this puny human? The spirits wanted me to find him. I can see Volga roll his eyes. Now that we know he speaks our language, I am more certain of it than before. He looks at me with a hopeful smile, his voice filled with conviction. What would our ancestors even want with a human whelp? Good question. I don't know, but all will be revealed in time. I still don't understand how I fall into all of this. You said that you found me. Where? How? Rannoch regards me with worry, uncertain if he should reveal it or not. That's when Volger spares him the dilemma. He found you in our forest, some distance from our village. I nod to the Black Wolf in appreciation. You mentioned some sort of ceremony that sent you there? I look to Rannoch expectingly. It was my coming of age. I was to receive guidance from the ancestors to find my path. And the fool mistook you for it. The Black Wolf sneers while Rannoch looks away, slightly embarrassed. What does that mean? The Grey Wolf seems troubled, and it makes me think that his previous confidence was completely unfounded. However, he quickly looks back at me with a smile on his muzzle. Don't worry about that now. That's a non-answer. Just know that our fates are intertwined. The spirits have charged me with protecting you. You speaking our language only proves that us crossing paths during my ceremony was not a coincidence. For you, hardly anything is. Cynical as vulgar may be, I can see his point. Rannoch is clearly into the idea of this whole mess being faded, but whatever his beliefs are, signs can always be misinterpreted. I'm not a path, whatever that means. I don't even know who I am. What could I possibly have to do with this wolf's fate? Am I really speaking your... I pause for a moment, still not understanding the implications. Your language? Am I barking and growling without even realizing? Have I gone completely mad? You really don't hear it? The black wolf's expression shows that he finally starts to believe me. No, it's as natural to me as if I were born with it. Surely you know your own language. The Grey Wolf smiles awkwardly, almost as if begging me to really think about it. But this is my own language. You must speak human, whatever dialect you call it back home. This is human. I cut off, trying to really contextualize the words I'm using. Isn't it? Rannoch shakes his head. You're confused, which is to be expected after what you've been through. I... None of this makes any sense. Despite my mind being wiped clean, I know that talking beasts aren't normal. I know this isn't my home. A terrible feeling of being lost fills me, and my heart sinks. I want to go home. Rannoch's ears perk up. Fine, that's exactly where I intend to take you. Just tell me where it is, and once we are rested, we'll be on our way. 
He smiles and his tone tells me he genuinely means to do just that. But where is my home? I don't know. I don't remember. The answer clearly unsettles Rannoch as he frowns with worry. Nothing comes to me when I try to think about anything before waking up here. My mind is just one empty void and the more I try to explore it, the more uneasy I feel as if something unpleasant lurked in the shadows. Finally, Volker breaks the silence, looking at me intently. What were you doing in the woods? I don't know. I don't even remember being in the woods to begin with. There's something you're not telling us. I have told you everything. Why can't he see that I'm the one in distress? Regardless of what trouble they claim they've gotten themselves into, I'm the one lost and completely baffled by my own existence. But I can see the black wolf isn't satisfied, his red eyes looking at me with distrust. I finally snap. I don't know what happened to me. All I remember is waking up in this fucking room, and then you attacking me. You were squealing like a dying pig. I had to shut you up, otherwise you would have been discovered. You should have explained that to me. I didn't know you spoke our language, and even if I did, you really think you would have listened? I know when I see prey fighting for its life, you were far gone the moment you laid your eyes on me. His tone is very much like mine, fed up and betraying a hint of hurt. Before we can escalate our argument, Rannoch steps between us. Enough. This is getting us nowhere. We don't know who this human is, or where he came from. I don't know that either. I mean, talking wolves? What is all this? I throw my arms out in resignation. This is a complete and utter nonsense. Why can't they see that I have nothing to gain from this? I lock my eyes with Volger, who's the only one treating me like some sort of wild card. I arch my brows upward, eyes still getting glossy despite my efforts to not get emotional. You've hurt me. You wanted to kill me. How can you think I ask for any of this? The black wolf's expression softens, almost as if for the first time he considered putting himself in my shoes. Eventually, he turns his gaze away with a deep sigh. The human obviously suffered some sort of trauma. Yes, you choking him certainly could be called that. Rannoch scuffs in annoyance. No. I shake my head. I mean, yes, that is going to stay with me for a while, but... I didn't remember anything before he attacked me. As traumatic as the encounter was, my problem started much earlier. I shudder, sensing some sort of darkness deep in the recesses of my memory almost preventing me from digging any deeper. It's almost as if the darkness consumed all that made up who I was. There are no memories of anything before this day. I can't remember my parents or friends. I feel warmth trickling down my cheeks as I realize I might as well be an orphan. I can't even remember a single other human. I... I know I am one, but... I can't even picture it. What do I even look like? I regard my hands and feet, then glance around the room. Do you have a mirror? Only after asking do I realize I know what a mirror is. My memory seems to be very selective and restricted to anything directly linked to my past. Volger looks at me with one brow risen, while Rannoch smiles apologetically. Sorry, I don't have such luxuries. Luxuries? Despite lacking any context, I know that mirrors aren't that. That's when I hear a metallic cling. Both me and Rannoch gaze towards Volker, who has unsheathed a long dagger. He approaches us casually while I see Rannoch's hackles raising. Suddenly, everything goes black for a moment and time freezes. A faint whisper fills my mind and I don't know where it's coming from, and I don't recognize it either. His blade will taste your flesh. Although it penetrates my very soul with cold fear, my heart almost yells at me not to listen. Is it a warning, or is my frightened mind playing tricks on me? Volger wouldn't hurt me after he made that promise, would he? The gray male issues a warning growl towards his friend, but I find myself placing a hand on the back of his neck. 
The wolf twitches at the sensation, looking at me inquisitively. Although it feels counterintuitive, I rub his fur, letting him know that everything is fine. It's okay. I trust the black wolf. Despite my initial knee-jerk reaction, I realize what he wants to do. And just like that, Volger kneels next to the bed, presenting me with the dagger resting across both of his paws. It's clear he takes great pride in it, as it's polished to perfection and the glistening surface reflects my image without a blemish. I reach to his paw, not to pick up the blade. I trust the wolf to keep it steady, but to adjust the angle so that I can see myself clear. I touch my lips, tracing them slowly as my eyes follow the mirrored gesture on the metallic surface. I feel up my cheekbones, then touch the tip of my nose, eyes fixed on the reflection. I ruffle my hair, pulling at stray strands of my fringe, pretty much exploring myself in the same fashion I was exploring Ranok earlier. Without even noticing it, I begin weeping again. Two streaks of tears cut through my image, clearly visible in the blade. A strange sensation twists my stomach, as if I'm seeing myself for the first time. My reflection is both strange and so familiar. I'm a human. This is what humans are. This is serious, Rannoch. The Black Wolf says with a grim tone. Not that he had any semblance of levity before, but at least now he's not being insulting. For the first time, I can actually see him looking at me with actual concern. Volger stands up, sheathing his blade back up behind his belt and looking to his friend. If you insist on this foolishness, we should bring Verissa in. Rannoch remains silent for a moment, as if weighing his options. I pull myself together, rubbing away stray tears. Who's Verissa? The tribe's shaman. She's both a spiritual guide and a healer. I'm glad the Grey Wolf clarifies that, because despite being vaguely familiar with the word, I'm not sure what it fully entails. Well, you said she's the one who sent you into the woods. Besides, she could help with my memory loss. I don't exactly feel like myself since I've woken up. I realize that if there is someone here who could give me medical attention, I'd rather have them check me up. Despite Rannoch's best intentions, he's clearly conflicted about something, and as calming and reassuring as he tries to be, he's no medic. Volger looks at me with a smile and understanding. At least the piglet can see some reason. What I want to see is an end to this emotional roller coaster. Roller coaster. Those words that come to my mind. They make no sense, but at the same time, I understand them. I shake my head in frustration. What's going on? What if she doesn't see it the way I do? If you claim that this is what was meant to be, Verissa is as much as part of it as you are. Besides, without her help, we're already fucked. That's when my eyes drift back to the black wolf, brows risen in confusion. You keep saying that we, but if it's Rannoch who found me, how did you get involved? It's not suspicious or accusatory, simply curious. I went looking for the fool when he was gone for too long. Don't spiritual journeys take long? The black wolf covers his eyes in annoyance. It's just tradition. We're told to go into the woods, find a rabbit eating moss, and realize we're all connected or some other crap. Vulgar nearly snarls in annoyance. I can sense he's not the one to believe in superstitions, and I find myself agreeing. When it took him an entire night to return, I decided to look for him, and there he was, fiddling with a naked mole rat. If you hate me that much, why didn't you just turn us in? Vulgar's eyes widen as he looks at me with surprise but only for a moment before he composes himself again. I don't hate you, Piglet. Just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Besides, Rannoch is my moon brother. I would never betray him. Then you're a good friend. Vulgar nods as if me saying this has made it any more valid. Every time he gets into trouble, I have to be there to save his furry ass. I look up towards Rannoch with a slight amused smile, noticing the wolf's embarrassment. Does he often find strange creatures in the woods? I don't know why I'm trying to break the tension, but both of the wolves look at me with surprise. 
We laugh it off. No, this is the first. His ultimate fuck up. The blackmail jabs, but this time in a playful manner. No. I smile but find myself disagreeing with the big wolf. He saved my life. That's not a mistake. Whatever happened to me, if I weren't found, I would have surely died. If not from exposure, then some animal would have done it. I chuckle at the absurdity. I thought of a wild wolf comes immediately to my mind, the beast simply eating me alive while I'm unconscious. Yet here I am because a wolf man rescued me. Had he not found me, I would have likely been dead by now. Most likely. The black wolf tries to shrug indifferently, but there's almost a hint of discomfort in his voice. I look up at Rannoch, touching his paw. Thank you. I place all my gratitude into those words I can muster. The wolf smiles, closing his eyes and nodding. Both of you. I smile at Vulgar, to which he only shrugs. Hmm. He looks away, but I can see his tail give an idle flick. Bring Verissa. The black wolf nods in satisfaction and leaves the room. Be careful, though. That sneaky piglet is quite proficient with cones. I almost choke on a chuckle completely thrown off by the remark. Cones? Rannoch looks at me expectingly, clearly feeling left out from our little inside joke. Never mind. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today, because it's way past one hour. But, um, yeah. Uh, so... I guess that was your introduction to both Rannoch and Vulgar. Two big hulking wolves from a village of wolves. And eventually you'll also get to meet Verissa in the next episode. Um, but yeah, this will, I guess, replace the current thing I'm doing at the time, which is the smoke room until there's an update for the smoke room or until there's an update for any of the other little things I might be doing. Like, what's the other one? Echo? And obviously the story is not finished yet. So once I reach whatever's left of this story, I will move on to something else until there's an update for this one. Basically what I'm going to be doing with the smoke room. So, yeah. So thank you all for listening slash watching. If you would like to play Far Beyond the World yourself, there will be a link down in the description. If you would like to support the author, writer, creator of this uh, story, there will be a link down for their Patreon. And I am not a Patreon of that one. So I don't know what you'll find, but I'm sure you'll get earlier access to um, builds of this, as with Echo. And yeah. I should probably be a patron sub for him because I actually like this story. It it gets better and better and better and better as it progresses. But yeah. Um, well, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.